Joining us now is Mr. Carl Schilling. He's the founder of something called the Advocacy Network. Carl, it's great to have you in the program. It's great to be with you again, Don. Yes. Now, you want to talk a little bit about oil and gas this week. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, it, it, it dawned on me, uh, Don, that we've changed once again uh, horses as far as administrations go. And uh, we're once again having a discussion on infrastructure and uh, the, uh, the, the lack of understanding of how it ties together with oil pricing, you know, just kind of seemed to be on my mind the last couple of days. So as an example, um, you know, we, we now have an oil price. We started out, uh, you know, post, pre this election at about 30 to $37 a barrel. And at some point we were below 30, right? And uh, since this election, which is not even, you know, this January to take over, um, we're now at 67 a barrel. So we're, we're rapidly approaching the $100 a barrel uh, window again, you know. And uh, what happens during these periods is that if you keep oil prices low, the cost of construction is lower, the cost of materials is lower, the cost of transportation is lower, the cost of living for everybody is lower. Plus, it motivates oil companies to do the research and development to find alternative forms of energy to add to it. But when the price of oil is through the roof, we are a petrodollar. You know, you know what I mean, Don? So, so everybody loses the distinction that we could never be a, a country without oil, because if we were, we would not be the reserve currency of the world. Our country would literally cease to exist you know, if we weren't the reserve currency of the world. Well, so, it's kind of interesting because people forget how many different products are made from petroleum. It's not just gasoline. Sure. It's, it's, it's everyday, you know, rubber, and plastics, and everyday things that you have, uh, you know, even some uh, farming food products, you know, uh, you know based on, on that type of thing, petroleum. But the cost of living is directly related to uh, the oil in our nation. And our nation will always have to be an oil-based nation because of the petrodollar issue. See what I mean? What do you so, suppose is motivating the Biden administration to uh, steer us away from oil? And, and we were energy independent until he became president. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a financial illiteracy issue, okay, that, that has long-term historically been uh, on, on, uh, on one political party that seems to see everything in popularity. In other words, I got to keep everybody happy. So therefore, you know, um, I, I will talk to global uh, globalists who want to have climate, you know, the perfect climate, which can never be, right? So in order to keep that side happy, um, we will do things that just economically make no sense whatsoever. So I do think it's a form of illiteracy, Don. I, I just think it's, a, it's an oversight. I don't think it's got direct motivation for any, for any power or evil. I, I just think it's a form of illiteracy. Well, you know, when I talk about climate change, my favorite line to tell people is, they can't tell us if it's gonna rain next Tuesday, but they can tell us how warm the temperature of the earth's gonna be in a hundred years. <laughs> and, and, and you know, they're connected too. Oil, uh, uh, oil once again, is connected to this whole climate concern. You know, you can't, you know, it's, uh, it's too simplistic to say, well, the climate will be better off with no oil. That's, that's just not even, that's not even a, a connection that could be made. So um, what's frustrating, you know, look, uh, in closing on this, you know, we've seen this historically. If you remember, the Obama administration uh, had pitched, um, you know, shovel-ready jobs, you know, with that, with that stimulus. And those shovel-ready jobs never happened. And the reason they never happened, which no one discussed, was oil was $100 a barrel. So the cost of construction, the cost of doing any infrastructure, the cost of those so-called shovel-ready jobs was prohibitive. So therefore, there was no shovel-ready jobs. N never had them. It, it can't be. And it's going to be the same with this. $3 billion, $4 billion, $6 billion, It doesn't make a difference how much money you print if you don't get oil down to a lower price point, you can't do the things you want to do. Of course, the Advocacy Network is a big proponent against financial victimization. And this is financial victimization on a global scale. Absolutely, it, it affects everybody. It affects everybody, especially the middle class. You know, it's, it's simple, it's simplistic, but you know, when you go in California, what's gas now, 450? 455, yeah. 
four fifty five, and and just uh, a year and a half ago, it was under under four, right? Three three sixty maybe three and a half, something like that. Yeah. So uh, again, here uh, gas prices go up, and people uh, it affects their their living. I mean, gas prices go up; it affects the cost of food, transportation to bring food in. It affects everything: uh, clothing, food, everyday life. So it's a hidden inflation, Don. That's what it is. It's a hidden inflation. And it impacts the middle class more than anybody else. The, the wealthy can afford to, you know, incur additional expense. The but because so many things are made from oil, too, and petroleum, it drives the cost of everything up. Your sneakers are made from oil. Your, your cell phone case is made from oil. I mean, it just goes on and on. The dashboard of your car is made from oil. And, 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 and reflectively, um, by being energy independent, for the first time by being totally uh, outside of this realm of control on the global side. Um, I believe that the Trump administration had us in position to really do infrastructure, to really do this, and also to handle some global uh, issues, you know, climate. Because if the cost of oil is lower, the gas companies, the big ones, the big oil people would do research and development, which they were, doing a lot of research and development on, on uh, alternative energies. But when, uh, when oil is $100 a barrel, <laughs> you're, a, you're an oil uh, magnet, why would you do any uh, research and development? Why would you waste any profit towards looking towards any other solution when you can have a speculative market driven by a false narrative of a scarcity in, in, in oil? But Carl, Trump had to go. He posted mean tweets for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah, we're going to pay a lot for those mean tweets. Don. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a big cost on that. Once again, the Advocacy Network, Carl Schilling. Carl, it's always a pleasure having you in the program because your insight is so valuable. And this time, I think you hit the nail right on the head. Well, thank you, Don. Appreciate the opportunity.